But I don't think you can run in those. Tell that to me at 21 escaping the Yakuza. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Schitt's Creek running gags. Here's the thing you should know about my dad. Sweetest little guy gives the worst gifts. You do realize the baby is crying. I do, yes. Do you like this sweater? Jared Leto gave it to me and I've always been on the fence about it. For this list, we're looking at recurring jokes from Schitt's Creek we could never get tired of. Did you catch all these running jokes? Let us know in the comments. All right, let's get into it. Number 10, extremely relevant fake books. You're just totally okay to sit here all day by yourself. That's why I took the job. Here's something to look out for on your next rewatch, if you haven't noticed it yet. All the books the characters of Schitt's Creek read are completely fake, and usually have some kind of connection to that character's story in the episode. Well, sounds like a creative solution. For example, in an episode where Moira learns the sex of Jocelyn and Roland's baby and immediately forgets it, she can be seen reading a book called A Hint of Amnesia. Don't worry, I've propelled it to the back of my brain. On a related note, Stevie must be quite a slow reader, as she's seen on several occasions reading the book Banshees on a Plane. Perhaps it's supposed to relate to Moira's sometimes banshee-like behavior. Does this computer get internet access? It does. Number nine, Johnny Rose gives terrible gifts. Pretty much anyone close to Johnny Rose knows that he is bad at giving gifts. Here's the thing you should know about my dad. Sweetest little guy gives the worst gifts. It's clear he wants to show appreciation for his loved ones with his gifts, but what he gets them ends up being so terribly misguided it's hilarious. He gave his totally non-athletic son David a basketball court for his bar mitzvah and gave Stevie a case of makeup she had no idea what to do with. Wow, look at you. Yeah, use some of that makeup you gave me. All things considered though, one of Johnny's most well-known bad gifts was the town of Schitt's Creek itself, which he got David as a joke for his birthday. You bought a small town in 1991, Johnny. Yes, I bought that as a joke for my son. That joke gift ended up meaning a lot to the Roses, and especially David, who truly fell in love with the town and the people in it. Why would I Photoshop a deed? The joke was owning the okay, town. Stop. That was the joke. Oh my god. Well, Number eight, Twyla Sands Family. I have some good news and some bad news. Oh, is the bad news that there is no good news? My aunt used to play this game with me a lot. The family of everyone's favorite Café Tropical waitress is as big as it is eccentric, which we learn as Twyla drops random bits of information about her truly bizarre relatives. Her aunt reportedly has a ghost haunting her house, her grandfather gave her a collection of hospital bracelets, and her father has a restraining order from the band Fleetwood Mac. No, um, my dad always said, when in doubt, say it with a song. He was a roadie with Fleetwood Mac, and that was the last thing McFleetwood said to him before the band hit him with a restraining order. Despite her unconventional and, at times, concerning background, Twyla always seems to be in good spirits and remains one of the sweetest characters in the series. We have to seriously admire her relentless optimism because some of her family stories are pretty messed up. But they left a dead bird inside. That's kind of like my aunt. She has a ghost in her house that keeps leaving dimes everywhere. Number seven, the Bob Jog. Keep them busy or uh, how do they work? Bob Curry, the local mechanic of Schitt's Creek, is a cheerful, optimistic older gentleman who is clearly beloved by the rest of the town. He does have a few odd quirks, including the unique way he enters a room, which can only be described as the Bob Jog. In many scenes, Bob can be seen entering via a strange half jog with his hands and arms bouncing around as he moves. This move is almost always accompanied with a laugh from Bob and surely delights audiences at home as well. The Bob Jog seems to come from Bob being so excited to tell someone something that walking just won't get him there fast enough, which we have to admit is pretty sweet. Isn't she a beaut? Number six, David Rose's disgusted face. David isn't the best at hiding his true feelings, as evidenced by the many times he pulls a disgusted face at something he doesn't like. I don't know why I haven't brought him in sooner. This place is perfect. Thank you so much. This could be a side effect of leaving a life of luxury and moving to a rural small town where plenty of things seem to offend and shock the roses. Oh, I forgot about that. It's more likely, though, that David has been pulling this face his whole life, having grown up with a family that's totally nuts. 
you were supposed to be at lunch. Why, why, are you, why were you not at lunch? Those around him might enjoy his displeasure or be offended by his grimace, but the audience will surely find his exaggerated expression entertaining no matter what. <coughs> oh, sorry, I gotta take this. What about this, though? Number five, Alexis Rose's ew. Alexis Rose's emotions are pretty easy to understand. If she's happy, she'll boop your nose. Anything else, and you'll likely get an ew of some sort. This short word became a frequently used catchphrase for Alexis, which for her expresses not only disgust, but also anything from shock to outrage and so much more. Some of her most famous ews are those directed at her brother David, which cracks us up every time. Oh my god, ew, David! Alexis is the reason this word has snuck into the vocabulary of so many fans of the show. And we love her for giving us such a versatile new way to use it. Actually, Roland is staying here for a few days. Ew. It's disgusting. Number four, Moira Rose loves her wigs. My very soul has been kidnapped. There's no ransom. No one's coming to save me. One of the most iconic parts of Schitt's Creek is undoubtedly Moira's vast collection of wigs, which she managed to salvage when the family's assets were seized. No, did you put Christy with Robin? They don't like each other. No, no. They all have names, of course, and she wears them all the time. Sometimes they appear in very unconventional ways, like as a hat over her real hair. No, I'm, I'm simply here to inspire. It's truly a full-on obsession, as Moira would risk it all to save her precious wigs. Or, as was the case when there was a fire at the motel, have Roland take the risk to save them. At one point in her life, Moira probably cared more about the wigs than her own children. My babies. No, your kids aren't here. My girls. What girls? My girls. Oh. Lorna, second from the left. Okay. If she takes on smoke, she'll never recover. Hey, this, oh. this one. And, and Cindy. Cindy below her. Cindy, I just gave her a blowout. Thankfully, as the family bonded, she proved she loves David, Alexis, and all her wigs equally. Number three, name dropping. Before the events of Schitt's Creek, the Roses belonged to some of the most elite social circles in the world, and apparently rubbed elbows with some seriously big names. For example, Jared Leto was Alexis's first kiss. I mean, I like it because Jared Leto gave it to you and he was my first kiss, but I don't know if I like, like it, like it. David went parasailing with Anderson Cooper. And Moira once had a ventriloquist act with Eva Longoria. Eva Longoria and I were supposed to perform our ventriloquist act for the Everybody Knows Benefit for Juvenile Rhinoplasty when she suddenly drops out due to exhaustion. Whether it's a force of habit or an attempt to impress all their new small town friends, the entire Rose family cannot resist an opportunity to drop an A-list name into every conversation they can. I used to text Zach Efron just like a question mark whenever I wanted a booty call. Poor thing would be like buzzing my apartment before I even pressed send. These interspersed jokes are as funny as they are random and totally make us want to see a Schitt's Creek prequel. I got your back today, girl. Just like Nicole Scherzinger did for me. Number two, Alexis Rose's crazy travel stories. Like, have you ever had to negotiate in Arabic? It is very difficult. I believe you. And try getting into Kiss Kiss in Tokyo without a lock of human hair. Now you see. Speaking of backstories, Alexis probably has the most insane out of her entire family. My eyes are brown. I am basically sample size. And one time I escaped from a Thai drug lord's car trunk by bribing him with soap. Her socialite life was filled with exotic travels, wild parties, and some seriously dangerous situations. She encountered Somali pirates, was held hostage by a Saudi prince, saved a friend who was kidnapped by a diamond smuggler, and that's not even half of her insane stories. But I don't think you can run in those. Tell that to me at 21 escaping the Yakuza. One super sweet moment that came out of this running joke was Alexis realizing how much David worried about her while she was on her adventures. Because I was the one at the consulate sending you temporary passports and colored contact lenses whenever you needed them. It's one sweet moment that shows the Roses have truly cared for each other all along, even if it didn't always seem like it. Well, you didn't have to worry about me. Well, I did. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Moira Rose's mispronunciations. We should go, Jocelyn has that baby thing. Moira has an interesting accent that's hard to place. 
sort of like an old Hollywood transatlantic accent with some random variations. She also has a unique pronunciation of certain words, like crab apple in her wine commercial. And the dazzling peach crab apple to his Riesling Rioja. Then there's her classic Bebe. You do realize the Bebe is crying. I do, yes. With names especially, it's a gamble whether Moira will remember someone's name in the first place, and a miracle if she can pronounce it properly. I can't be expected to remember everyone I meet. Catherine O'Hara struck comedy gold with Moira's voice, which is totally ridiculous and hilariously confusing. At the same time, we'd listen to absolutely anything that was narrated by Moira Rose herself. Wouldn't you? Excuse me, but the enchiladas were my mother's recipe. Can any of you do a good Moira impression? I cannot, but I'd try anyway. If you can, tag me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton because I need to see them. Or be sure to let us know in the comments what your favorite Schitt's Creek running gag is. See ya.